John 20, 21 to 22. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Okay, number one. Jesus in 21 does something that only God does, unless you want to beg the question saying a creature can do it. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Can the heretic show you anyone other than God who breathes out the Spirit, who pours out the Spirit, and baptizes with the Holy Spirit? No one else other so than God. Why would you focus on verse 23 mm -hmm. and ignore that in 22? Jesus does what the Hebrew Bible ascribes to Job alone. In fact, this is an echo of the Genesis account of creation. Now, let me show you what John is telling you. Like God breathed life into the first man, making him a living soul, that same God is now breathing new life on his creation. Right? Yep. Because yep. in Genesis 2, verses 4 to 7, it says, Jehovah God fashioned man from the dust of the ground, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, right? Yep. But then John 1 began the prologue by saying, Jesus is that word who was with God and who is God, whom the Father used to create everything and give life to everything because life is in him. That means John is telling you that Jehovah God who fashioned man and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils is none other than Jesus, which is why Jesus is now renewing man by breathing the Holy Spirit to make man anew, make them spiritually alive. Yeah. That's number one. So yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, do the apostles forgive sins the way Jesus does? No, because if you want to know how they go about forgiving sins, what's the context there? The context is Jesus sending them out to preach the gospel like the Father sent him out, right? Yep. And he sends them out in the life and the power of the Holy Spirit so that they know they're not alone. They're not doing it in their own strength. The Holy Spirit will empower them and inspire them to bring about new life by preaching the gospel. So then the first question someone needs to ask, how did they forgive sins? Did they do it the way Jesus did so that you may know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins? Your sin is forgiven? Or did they do it differently, which shows they're not forgiving sins the way Jesus does. You don't need to guess. Read that same chapter, John 20, 30 to 31. 30 to 31. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So how did he proclaim salvation, forgiveness, or condemnation? Right there, he just proclaimed mm. forgiveness of sins. How? I'm sorry, what's the question again? How I'll did bust he you proclaim? up, Jeremy. I will bust you up. <laughs> How did he proclaim forgiveness of sins? Because what is forgiveness of sins? To obtain everlasting life, right? Yeah. So how did he proclaim it? He just proclaimed it right there. He just proclaimed oh. your sins are forgiven. How? By believing in Jesus. That's how. They yeah. would go around telling people, look, believe in Jesus Christ, you're forgiven. Reject Jesus Christ, you remain in your sin, you stand condemned. Yeah. Go to 1 John 5, 9 to 13. 1 John 5, 9 to 13. Mm -hmm. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given of his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So how did he proclaim forgiveness of sins and condemnation for your sins? Just believe in the name of the Son of God. So he didn't go around doing what Jesus did, 
Son, no. your sins are forgiven. Woman, your sins are forgiven because I, the Son of Man, have power on earth to forgive your sins. No. And now go to 1 John chapter no. 1, same epistle, 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. It says 7 or 7? 7, 7 1 John 10. chapter 1, 7 to 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. So and not I will forgive him. you. You confess mm -hmm. your sin and acknowledge you're a sinner. He will forgive you and wash you in the blood of Jesus. Yep. And to cleanse uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. In verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Mm -hmm. So this is how they went about saying your sins are forgiven or your sins remain. Now read 1 John 2 verses 1 to 2. 1 John 2. Verses 1 to 2. Right after. Right? Yep, right Just after. No yeah, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation of our sins and not for ours only, but also for the world. Can you show me where any of the apostles went around forgiven sins the way Jesus did? Uh, I can't. I can't find it. It's not uh, in so, the Bible. So, if I read Jesus's words in context to the apostles, the way they forgive mm -hmm. sins by saying, "Look, God loves you, so He sent Jesus, His Son, our Lord, to die for mm -hmm. you, to atone for you, to wash you in His blood. If you confess mm -hmm. Jesus, believe in Him, the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. will wash you of your sins. You're forgiven. You reject Jesus, you remain your sins. You stand condemned. Does that sound like the way yeah. Jesus preached? No. And that's Jesus why is more authority. And that's why in 1 John 2, 12, what does he say? For whose sake, on whose behalf, by whose authority are you forgiven? 1 John 2, 12. 1 John 2, 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And whose name's sake? That's Jesus in verses 1 and 2 of that chapter in 1 John 5, verses yep. 13, right? Yep. So notice how they went saying, your sins are forgiven or you're, you're condemning your sins. They didn't say, I, John, have power on earth to forgive sins. That's what Jesus said in Mark 2.10. I, the Son of Man, have power to forgive sins on earth. They said, listen, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sent by the Father to save the world by dying for you to pay your debt of sin and washing you in his blood. If you acknowledge you're a sinner and confess your sin and turn to Jesus, he will wash you and you'll be forgiven for his sake. But if you reject him, you stand condemned because you've denied Jesus. Is that, does that sound like how Jesus forgave sins? No. 